Hello everyone, it is Leah from Dime Culture. And in today's video, we will be doing a monochrome painting activity. This activity is great for watercolor begin beginners, as well as those who have maybe have stepped away from the watercolor for a while and want to get back into it and feel a little rusty. Or if you just want to practice your values. Now, painting monochrome is great for many things, but before we get into that, I wanna show you and discuss what I'm doing right now in the video. And that is actually testing out my values. So what I did was I took a dark color and I created it by mixing two dark colors. And right now I am diluting that paint to get a gradient. So I am going from dark to light. With watercolor, it is, it's easy to go from light and to dark. So you can add more pigment, more of your paint into your water, or you can add more water into your pigment. Personally, what I like to do is get my set dark color first. And then in separate areas on my palette or in a one of those star flower mixing di dish bowl things, I'll start to add more water to it in each of those little pockets. You first wanna start out by doing this activity before diving right into painting something is so that you can get familiar with just what kind of tones you can get out of your paint. Because when it comes to watercolor, you always start from light to dark. And this is really helpful and good to practice with monochrome. So by painting monochrome, you wanna pick out the lightest shade that you wanna start with and then start building on top of it with your other more pigmented batches of water with the watercolor paint in it. I feel like I'm talking really, really fast or <laughs> holding my breath as I talk. <laughs> okay, <sighs> relax, take a deep breath, have my water bottle crack. <laughs> Don't know if you guys could hear, but that's what happened. Um, so let me first say, when you're doing something like this, you know, you don't have to have a complex subject matter. You don't have to be thinking grand scale type of work. It can be very simple. What I'm doing is using this foliage, as you can see that I was playing with earlier in the video and is into the corner of the shot as my inspiration for the my practice. Now that I've gotten all those firsts out of the way of me saying, firstly, let me say this, firstly, let me get to this first, it's time to actually discuss doing the monochrome painting. So the first step is to take your lightest scale, as I mentioned previously, just for a moment, and then put it down. Your next step is to get the next level of pigment that you'd like and layer on top of it or put it in an area that you feel needs to be darker. When you're layering in watercolor, it's called glazing. I like to call it layering because it's simpler of a terminology for everyone to understand. Um, but you want to put it on the areas that you are looking for darker spots. So for example, with the leaves, there were very light faint uh, vine uh, veins throughout the leafing. So what I did was I made the whole leaf the lighter color. And then now that I'm going in with a darker color, I am now etching out where the um, veins would have been and making sure I'm filling in the opposite spacing. So I'm not drawing the veins, I'm, I'm leaving space for them. You can even do this technique for flowers or for a landscape. Uh, for a flower, for example, you might do the solid flower or certain areas in your lightest tone. And then for as the shadows in the flower get darker, you'll add the next layer of paint. And then add the next layer to deepen that shadow until you get to the center of the flower where the shadow is the deepest, where our eyes see the darkness. With monochrome painting, it's a great way to help teach our eyes to see shadows and light. So when we're looking at subjects, our eyes see where it's dark, we see where it's light, but you don't think of that when you're looking at it. The best way to go about practicing that, especially when you want to do things like watercolor where you start off light 
is to look at the subject and then focus in on where the light spots are first and then expand out from there. I'm not sure if that sounds awkward or sounds right, but the best way I can explain it is this. When I used to use acrylic painting, um, like acrylics as my main focus of materials, I would actually focus on the dark and then go to light because you can mix in white really easily with acrylics and lighten everything. So I would lay down all the dark spots and then add light on top. Where with watercolors, you wanna do the opposite. You wanna start light and go dark. Think of it like highlights and shadows. If you're looking at a window, the highlighted area is where the sun is coming in and the shadowed area is the, say, your wall or the frame. Um, so those are the darker areas. This is what I mean by saying, focus on the light and then go out to the dark. Where in acrylic, what you do is use your dark paint to frame it draw your windowsill and then paint in the center of the window. Where with watercolors, you're gonna actually put down your, what, your lighter colors first. So if the window has a bright white spot, you're gonna leave that blank. You're gonna leave it the color of the paper, but then add in your light um, washes first and then start layering on top of that. I decided to do this painting for myself personally because I had been using my acrylic gouache for quite some time and focusing mostly primarily on using my Posca pens for a lot of my creative work that I've been doing for the past month or so. I really felt like I was neglecting my watercolor skills and not practicing as much and I was feeling rusty. I myself felt like, uh, like I was missing my watercolors. I needed them in my life more, but I felt yeah, I felt rusty. So by doing my monochrome painting, I was really just spending some time working on my skill level. And honestly, you don't have to do this all the time. I know if you're just doing watercolors for your own personal um, expression of your emotions, you know, to give you some healing time, you may not want to put in that effort, but I have a counter to that to that argument right there. My counter argument is that even though you may not feel you need to put in that uh, practice or feel like you have to do it, which you don't, you honestly, you don't have to do it. But if you did put in this time and actually spend some of your healing with art time or art journaling on practicing with just one color and looking at your environment, you'll actually find that your art journaling process might evolve. You might actually get more expressive and be able to put more of your emotions into it and emote what you want to emote. So for example, if you wanted to express a moment in time where you were coming out of a dark period or you saw the light and you could feel the warmth, but you wanted to express it, but you weren't sure how and everything was coming out, the same tone, the same lightness, the same darkness, or it was just coming out muddy, practicing things like this during your me time actually will help you sit down and really see it and become instinctual with the act of putting in layers and seeing light and dark and having contrast in your paintings and your, in your journaling. Painting monochrome really is such a helpful activity when you are starting out or when you are working on adding in those highlights, those shadows, that contrast to really help you express something. It's such a great activity and I really hope that you guys are enjoying the video and if you have any questions or comments, you know, definitely leave it in the comment section below. I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible and if you uh, are interested in what I do here at Dime Culture, which is um, help with healing through art and lessons on art as well as some product reviews definitely hit that subscribe button because 
I'm really excited to announce that September's freebie item for those who subscribe to my mailing list on dimeculture.com, they're getting a fun activity that is unlike any other activity that I've done since I first started this a few months ago because this activity was all inspired by you guys. It's something that you've asked me multiple times. I've gotten DMs on social media about it and I definitely want to say I hope (laughs) I definitely want to say that I'm hoping that you're going to enjoy it, but I definitely enjoy doing this activity myself. So yeah, next week's video is going to be jam packed with a lot of stuff. So if you want to be informed about it when it happens, when it launches, hit the subscribe button and that little bell icon because it'll notify you when a new video goes up. Now I am nearing the end of the video, but before it gets to the end, I just want to say thank you to all of those who do subscribe to Dime Culture and to everyone new here at Dime Culture. Uh, Every day it seems like I'm getting a message saying that somebody new has subscribed and I get so excited every single time it happens. I know like some people are like, oh yeah, I just got a one subscriber. No, no, no. I'm like, yeah, I got one this week. I'm like so pumped when it happens because I really hope that you're subscribing because the content that I'm supplying is helping you and you're healing with your art and you're growing and you're feeling better about yourself. And yeah, I really, I get so pumped about it. So I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And also I want to say thank you to those of you on YouTube who have now gone over to Instagram and have joined the daily activities and the daily conversations. So yes, thank you so much for all of this, guys. It's so amazing. If you have any comments about um, suggestions for upcoming videos or areas that you'd like to learn more about, definitely let me know that in the comment section as well. Um, I'm definitely up to hearing your ideas or your thoughts or areas you wanna learn or get better at because I'll make a video on that for you guys. Um, Now, before I reach the end, I got one minute left and I just want to say my final thoughts on monochrome. I know I've been talking about it this entire time, um, (laughs) but my final thoughts are try it at least once, okay? I know it's not for everybody and putting in this activity time, but I definitely say try it at least once, see if it helps you hone your eye. And then if you actually enjoy it, if you enjoy the process of playing with your watercolors to first get your gradient, then great. If you enjoy the process of painting something with monochrome, then even more great. Because the more you do it, it doesn't have to be every single day, but the more you do it, the more uh, your eyes will get trained to seeing these things. All right, so we are definitely at the end now. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you liked it. I know I said that already, but I really hope you liked it. And until next time, guys, stay magical. 